Hi guys, I'm Tasha from Travel and Tash. Today I am hanging out with Fun Day Korea Networks who are sponsoring this video. They're taking us out on this tour. They're including lunch, visits to museums. We're going to learn about the Hangul language here, what made it special. They're opening the museum just for us, which is so cool. And we're going to hang out and visit the tomb of King Sejong who invented the Hangul Korean alphabet. We're going to listen to some traditional Korean music. Okay. Before the creation of Hangul in 1443, Korean was written using Chinese characters. When King Sejong masterminded the creation of the Korean alphabet, the ruling class continued to use Chinese to transcribe the Korean language and thereby retained the social prejudices that set them apart from the regular people. Practical textbooks on learning Chinese, Buddhist scriptures and military tactics were distributed. The regular people were encouraged to become literate. Although resistance to using Hangul continued long after its invention, when Japan deposed Korean monarchs in the early 20th century, Hangul became a method to create a spirit of national resistance and Korean heroes believed that protecting the Korean language was a means to restoring their national sovereignty. Of the few languages where scholars strategically invented a written script, only King Sejong documented the creation process. His manual, called the Humin Jongum, explained the purpose of creating a Korean script. Sejong outlined the positioning of the tongue in the throat for each vowel and consonant, and where the letters had added stress that required a puff of air to accompany pronunciation. The Humin Jongum disappeared for more than 500 years and was rediscovered by a man who purchased it for 10,000 won. And knowing what he had, he kept it a secret until the end of the Japanese occupation. Guys, I tried my hand at calligraphy, which was so much fun. I um, chose a particular poem that I really liked and I practiced drawing it. I gave it to the official calligrapher here who actually put it onto paper and, and that's the result right there. So cute, right? I love it. Young Han, the guide, was so lovely. I had such a good time. I did my print blocking. I just had the most yummy traditional Korean food. It was so delicious. I don't know what I loved more. I really loved the pork. I really loved the fish. I really loved the japchae noodles with the um, with the meat. So so good. Yum. Guys, I'm in Yeoju in a place called Yongnung, which is the burial site of King Sejong. I've heard so much about King Sejong and the entire tour today has been all about him. And, you know, it's really cool to actually finally see the place where he has been buried hundreds of years later. <laughs> There is his mound, I see it, right up there. So that's like the perfect mound. Guys, this is the mound where King Sejong is buried. And I can't believe that I'm actually seeing it here with my own eyes. You know? 
it seems like this area is not accessible to the public. You can't actually walk up the hill. You can't walk on the mound. Guys, I'm here watching another performance now. So incredibly lucky, right? bracelets I'm not sure how to make them but we're gonna figure it out we've got some people here that are kindly helping us so it reminds me a little bit of Spanish ganchi or, or um, crochet this little hook way round that I hoped to. That's all right. Thank you so much to Funday Korea Networks and also to the Korean Culture and Information Service that made all of this possible. I'm having the most incredible day. It's such a lovely tour. So guys, this is my bracelet. Ta-da! Not, not this. This. <laughs> 